Let's talk about some practical public relations writing. We're going to practice writing news releases. They're also called press releases. And these are some of the most common forms of public relations writing. Because your audience, your recipient of the news release is going to first be the journalist or the editor or the producer, you want to make sure that you follow good writing guidelines. Uh, before you do anything, though, you're going to determine which media outlets are going to receive your release. You don't want to shotgun it. You don't want to send it everywhere. That's really a waste of time and effort. And so by narrowing down your list of recipients is going to help you craft your release. All your news releases should be newsworthy. Uh, they need to absolutely be well written and they need to adhere to the organization's style guidelines. So by knowing which outlets are going to get the release, you can craft it to fit the guidelines of that particular organization. Now we're going to work on advanced stories and those are stories about upcoming activities or events. And it's going to be important in these stories to give us the time and the place of an event, the date of an event. In a news story that we have written in the past, it doesn't really matter. It wasn't as crucial to know the whens and the wheres because it already happened. That was important in the lead, but we didn't, we didn't really focus on that. But we can't omit that here for these stories because it is important to know when it is and where it is so that we can go. It's going to have some background information about the event um, and you're not going to tell the public why it should attend but you're going to give the most interesting and intriguing and an appealing information in the lead so that we want to go. You've got to think about this from the journalist's perspective. So let's look again a little bit at what journalists are looking for. They're looking for topics that are new. They want topics that are local, uh, that are interesting, unusual. They are relevant to the audience. Uh, the audience finds it important because it has an impact on people. So if you notice, these are all news values that we discussed earlier in the semester. And that's all going to be what you want to focus on and think about when you write your story. When you write your press release, your advance is an inverted pyramid story, right? But your audiences could be journalists. Journalists don't want to hear about your opinion or anybody else's opinion. They are going to smell a contrived event a mile away. They won't even touch it. So um, they want you to be honest and you want to be truthworthy. Uh, you want to tell people what's going on here. Now let's look at what journalists are going to toss in the trash can immediately, right? A bunch of words that don't say anything. Uh, it has no news value. There aren't any facts in it. It sounds like an advertisement. Um, words like this, right? Best, world famous, greatest, interesting, important. We don't want those, right? Those are opinion words and it'll land you in the trash, right? Uh, I don't want to be told what to buy or what to do. I can turn the TV on and hear an advertisement that would like for me to buy or do a certain thing. So don't do that to people either. There are no solid facts in here. It states the obvious, something everybody already knows. Why are we even talking about that? Why are we talking about something everybody already knows? And that why should be your news release, right? If it's one-sided, again, it sounds like an advertisement. I hear the client's opinion, but um, yeah, they're not going to, they're not, they're going to, that'll be uh, one of the 95% of news releases that end up in the trash. You don't want that to happen to you. Now, one important part of a news release and actually a skill you need uh, as you write digitally, especially, is headline writing. You're going to write a headline for your news release. And so your headline, put stars by this, is one sentence. It's a sentence. A headline is the tiniest story you're going to write. So it's a complete sentence. It expresses a complete thought. 
It has a subject and a verb. It's not a phrase, right? It's not a few words. It's a complete thought. And so here's an example. Football fans find unique tailgating spots. That's a complete sentence. It expresses a complete thought. Now, headlines don't have periods. I just want to show you that here. Uh, now, there's a lot I don't know, but I understand what this sentence says here. Another important detail is that a headline comes from the lead. So don't think that you can write a headline first and then omit information in your lead because you said it in the headline. Those are two separate entities and you need to treat them as such. So write your lead and your story first, then come back and write your headline. That's going to keep you from making that mistake, which a lot of people do because they think I've said it in the headline, so I don't have to say it in my story. Not true. You're going to have some repetition there and that's as it should be. In a headline, you're going to omit some articles, those little words a, an, and the, and maybe some other descriptors. So here's an example. Boy finds turtle in backpack. Now, um, I don't have, if I were going to write this as a sentence, I don't have articles in the headline, but a sentence would say, a boy finds a turtle in his backpack, right? And so, but I can leave those out when I do my headline. I can omit conjunctions and instead use a comma. Governor visits China, comma, Japan. I can use present tense to indicate past tense, right? Mayor speaks to union members, promises, raises. So that comma indicates a conjunction, and this already happened. Now some headlines, you really need to use past tense. Again, you can use your judgment there. And then I'm going to use to plus a verb for future tense. Governor to visit China and Japan. Now let's look at some examples of headlines from stories we know that we've written throughout the semester. Fire destroys Dillville family's home. Now there are some articles missing from there as you see. And again, headline writing is going to be quite intuitive for you because you read more headlines than you do anything else. So I don't think you're going to have a problem with this. The key is two things. Number one, it's a complete sentence has a subject and a verb and expresses a complete thought. And number two, it is derived from the lead. It doesn't replace anything in the lead, but it comes from the lead. Dilvero driver talking to car insurance company, rear ends truck. So that comma can take the place of a conjunction. Boxed fans, ACs found in homes of heat wave victims. I can use some advertisements here. Carrie, I'm going to do this one over. Now let's look at some headlines for stories we've written already. So here are some that we did earlier in the semester, right? Fire destroys Dillville family's home. Dillville driver talking to car insurance company. Rear ends truck. So that comma takes the place of my conjunction. Box fans, ACs found in homes of heat wave victims. So I can use some abbreviations here. Uh, not all headlines follow AP style exactly. So for example, for an abbreviation of two letters, I don't need any periods, but again, we're not going to stress about those things here. We just want to make sure that we get the wording well. Um, Dillville teacher wanders four days on Appalachian Trail. Murder suspect tries to shoot Dillville officer. Toddler hauls a court for hitting the bottle. Now, I'm going to tell you, you can have fun with these headlines, right? These feature stories. I would say you have a ball with the headlines because you had fun with the story. Uh, we don't want to write some straight laced headlines for those feature stories. Squirrels prefer hoods for new home. You can have a lot more fun with these two here, but you see the difference now. The minute I see that feature headline, I know that I'm going to read a feature story, right? So let's look at um, a template for a, a um, press release. So here we have here we have our contact information. So this is going to tell the recipient of the press release how to contact the person who wrote the press release. 
And so this would usually be the reporter uh, who is going to read this and say, who do I call to find out more information about this event? And so I would, as a PR professional, use my information here so the person can find me. So anything that I need to tell that person, my phone number, email address, website, if I have social media contact, I can include that here. But I want you to notice that the, the words contact information, that's written in bold, and that's going to go at the top. And then the next thing that I'm going to have too is something called, usually it's for immediate release. Often you send a press release and that person can act on it when he or she receives it. But that lets the person know I'm, I'm good to go now. I can begin to report this or find out more about that. Next comes the headline and that's going to be one line. And I'll show you a little bit more about this in my next slide. Uh, and then we have the ending mark. And that ending mark is um, a courtesy to the recipient to let that person know that that's the end of the information. And that 30 has no significance in anything that you're writing. It's actually a holdover from the time of the telegraph days when a telegraph sender, a message sender, was finished, uh, that sender would put dash 30 dash and that would let the recipient know that the message was finished that there was no loss along the way of information which often happened during that time period so I think as far as I can tell that's where that comes from if you ask anyone in the media what dash 30 dash means the person's going to know exactly and so that's for the recipient it's a courtesy to let that person know that nothing's been lost along the way and that's the end of the message. Now here is an example of a press release. In fact, I've included the template that I just showed you and also this press release in your module information so you can print those out if you'd like. And so here you would normally have a logo or a uh, some kind of um, sign to the recipient, maybe something that we recognize as belonging to that company. Uh, it could be letterhead. Uh, you don't have to do this for the assignment, but this would be something that you would often see on a press release. And then you have the contact information. Remember, that's your contact information, the writer's contact information. Who does a reporter call to find out more about this event? And now we let the recipient know that it's for immediate release. Now, sometimes you might see for release after a certain date. Um, that's not as common as seeing for immediate release, but maybe there is, you want to keep it quiet until a certain time period. Then you're going to have your headline. And notice that Thompson Construction to launch interactive website for customer building projects. So I have my who and what is that person doing? Um, and, and also you want to make sure that you make this interesting and tell us exactly what the um, stories about to launch tells me that uh, this is going to happen. And so that's your headline. What I want you to do now, notice how that headline stretches across the width of the page. Um, you don't want it more than one line, but you don't want it to be shorter. Let's use as much space as we have. Always use as much space as you've given and time that you've given for a video project to fill that up with information. So that's what we're going to do there. And then my lead, again, we're inverted pyramid writing. One sentence, 30 to 35 words. You want to answer the W's and the H. I have my when in here. I have what's going on, right? Uh, and make it appealing. Tell us what it is this website is going to do. And then my second graph is going to fill in whatever information is important to the lead, but you know, I couldn't fit in there. So I can explain the website a little bit more um, about that. That's going to make it more interesting too. And then I want to have a direct quote if I can in my story. So you want to try to do that in your advance if you can. You never want to start a story with a direct quote, but by the end of the second paragraph, beginning of the third, is where you want to have your direct quote. And let's put our direct quote again in its own paragraph so we can set that off and keep ourselves from writing paragraphs that are too long. 
So after your lead, your paragraphs are going to be four lines max. They can be shorter, but max four lines. We're going to single space all of this. We're going to use block paragraphs. That's a real common way to see a press release. And then your later paragraphs, anything after about the third, is going to, again, continue in inverted pyramid style. Toward the end, you want to let people know uh, the audience, the general audience, some um, action points. Maybe there's phone number, maybe where you should buy the tickets if you need a ticket to go to this, a website maybe that that person can use. And um, so that would be at the end. And then you have your ending mark, which is going to be your courtesy to the recipient. Now, when you take a public relations writing class, you are going to do a different pieces of this press release. There are a few things that I've left off. You're going to spend more time talking about the purpose of your writing, but this will give you a start at least to understand how to set it up, what it should look like, what it should have on it, so that if you have an opportunity to use this skill, you can do that. Now we're going to have two assignments this week with news releases writing because I know that you're busy with other things also this week. Um, and so we're going to write two assignments, right? So we're going to write page uh, 326 and 27. Uh, that's an advance on Americans' work, so you can go and look at the video, the brainstorming video. And then the second one, once you turn in number one, uh, then we'll, we'll edit it and give it back to you and you can work on number two.